Hello and welcome to another interview from Improv News. We are here in Amsterdam to the 20th anniversary of the Amsterdam Improv Festival. And next to me is, and I practice this, Niels Petter Merlin from very Norway. Good. Very good. <laughs> It's very good. <laughs> good to have you here. Thank uh, you. Thanks for talking with us. You are from Norway, where exactly Norway, and uh, you uh, have in an improv theater group. And yeah, tell us more. Yes. Well, um, we are located in Oslo, uh, and um, the theater is called uh, the Andre Theater, the other theater. And it's, uh, we run our own venue, and it's a 165-seat venue with a small cafe and food and drinks. And, uh, and uh, it's, um, uh, there's an ensemble uh, of about 15 people. I'm, I don't have the exact number in my head right now, but it's about 50, because it changes a bit from season to season. Uh, and we do shows uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturdays, and sometimes Sunday. So there's... Since there's double shows on Thursday, Fridays, and sometimes triple shows on Saturday, there's quite an amount of, there's at least six or seven shows per week, and sometimes more than nine, ten shows in a week. Our, I mean, we program mostly uh, improvised shows, but we also program scripted shows that are, um, to say, like uh, in some respect, uh, aesthetically related mm. to what we do as improvisers. So you would find um, international shows that uh, we have picked up from the Fringe uh, Festival in Edinburgh or elsewhere. Shows that are sort of um, lo-fi, low-key kind of shows with some kind of attitude towards the audience that's important for us, that it's in a way somewhat in a dialogue with our audience. Uh, that also goes for the shows that we develop ourselves that are scripted, uh, which also have that sort of aim to at some level either have a uh, direct dialogue with the audience or in some way be open to the impulse of the audience during the performance in some way. So we have, um, I'd say, maybe 15 to 20 percent is scripted and the rest is improvised. And so. Uh, we have an aim to to increase the level of script, scripted shows. And when I say scripted shows, I mean shows that are uh, I, uh, that are developed or devised or written um, in cooperation with the performers in some way. Okay. Uh, we are not looking for like putting up the classics or anything. There are other theaters that do that very well, so we're not going to interfere with their job. Yeah. Um, and the theater is uh, three and a half year old. We started in September 2011. So it's rather new, though the improvisers and the performers in the theater has been, uh, has been working in other groups earlier on. But there was a big... Um, people were sort of scattered around in small theaters, clubs and cafes, and people were doing in different constellations, different kind of shows. And, But uh, I think a lot of us who have been going on for quite a while, like 10, 15 years, we felt the need of returning to a theater space uh, where we could sort of set the agenda more for ourselves, how we wanted to develop our work and how we wanted to present our work. So uh, it was sort of like a big get together to raise money to build a place like this. So we moved into a really old building and, and built our own theater, actually. And uh, it's been... Um, It's been a weird travel, but uh, we are, uh, as far as now, uh, I can say that we've had very much success and uh, thanks to coincidences and luck and hard work in a way. But it's, it's an ensemble-driven theater, so you have a, a fixed ensemble or mainly fixed for the season. Yep. It's not like uh, as a group in, no in Oslo I could come to you and say, okay, I want to play a, a show and rent. Well, uh, well, we there are some what to say like uh, there are some constellations of performers that go away back in time before the theater, and they still do their shows in their group in a way. And some people in that group is not the ensemble. Okay. So there might be that there's a group who who does a show where some some of the performers has uh, moved on and are mainly working with TV or doing other stuff. So they're not. They are not the, the obvious choice to go into the ensemble at the theater, but they still perform their show yeah. within the program. Like guests? 
like yeah you know, and, and, and and i mean there's i think at this point we have three shows that on a regular basis do runs at the theater that um are not produced by the theater but okay. still sort of involve there's a bit uh, messy i hear but uh, still involve some people from the ensemble so it's like we're sort of there's not only ensemble member playing shows in a yeah. way okay but there's um but there's the hard core of the development uh, artistically and uh, is, is sort of built around that ensemble, yeah. And the scene in Norway, is, now it seems a little bit like you are the, the main theater then, because you're, uh, if you, yeah, producing six shows at least yeah. a week, you're, I think, the most visible uh, theater. How is, what's about the rest, the, the scene in Oslo? It, it changed, of course, a lot when we opened, because uh, we invited everyone to join in, uh, both financially and sort of to have the ownership of the place. So that changed things a lot. But now there's, because of the theater again, so there's an interesting dynamic that because of the theater, the community is starting to grow even more because we give a lot of workshops and yeah. courses and our weekly maestro impro show that's every wednesday sort of also gathers a lot of beginners and more experienced players and out of these these activities the sort of new groups are popping up so there's actually now today today or yesterday i think they come they came a group to the festival here from oslo yeah. that is uh, sort of partly involved in the theater as young players and they play their own show uh, in a small club yeah. Uh, and there's uh, at the students uh, society there's a there's a small theater space where they do shows so so now again it's sort of growing because the 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 need for a place to play and to perform is starting to get bigger than what we can offer yeah um, so i think that uh, we'll see in a four or five years time that there will be about a handful of other places as well but i think it's hard to say in oslo with i mean 600,000 people it's not a really big city so to have more than one theater at our size, I think is complicated. We are also opening another stage this year. Yeah. So we're having an yeah. intimate stage as well with like um, 40, 50 seats yeah. to develop more work for kids and young people. So there's, I think with our growth and our position that we have sort of received, they say last year we sold uh, 30,000 tickets Okay. Which is a lot of sold out shows yeah. during a week. So I think that there's a, there is somewhere, there's like a limit to what kind of people would want to see so much improv. Uh, so we'll see. It's an interesting development for us, I think, because it's been a really dynamic and very positive community in Oslo for, for years and years. So the theater sort of... Uh, made a, a very different dynamic but uh, hopefully a good one cool so um there's yeah i think there's a point like a uh, theater is really something to uh develop like uh like a nucleus who from crows a possibility to mm. grow further um and now he invited to the 20th impro amsterdam festival i'm not sure how to say it correctly but i think it's <laughs> neither it's, do i Impro Amsterdam Festival or International, I, we, we don't know. But we learned <laughs> yesterday, I yeah. think, that uh, the Dutch are not so um, creative in giving names. So the <laughs> so they say, yeah, the yeah. festival is called <laughs> Impro Festival. Oh, yeah, yeah, which is fair enough, yeah. Um, so you're invited the first time or you? Yes, it's the first time we've been invited. Um, I think there's been people from Oslo visiting the festival for, or I don't know if they've been performing here, but sort of been part of the festival in some way, I think. Uh, but um, we decided, when we opened the theater, we decided to not applying for festival, not going to festivals within the first couple of years, yeah. because we wanted to build a, uh, a program that uh, could uh, establish a regular audience, which I somewhat find a little bit different than a festival audience. There's kind of... The festival audience is more like an event audience, yeah. but if you want to build a theater venue that sort of gets a regular audience year after year, you have to think a little bit different about how you perform, how do you develop your shows, and what kind of shows you develop. 
That's interesting because uh, there's one question I think every improv theater is thinking about how to um, get to a normal audience. It's not interested in a playing improv or, or getting a member of the community. It's more like uh, what do you on a Saturday evening? Let's go to theater, cinema, or improv theater. Yeah. Um, what, what's your? Uh, what did you do to get a normal? Uh, <laughs> to get normal audience? people coming, yeah. Yeah, not, not not strange people. Yeah. Well, I think there are quite a bunch of strange people coming, but <laughs> I see what you mean. No, I well, I think that there's. Um, um, first of all, it's important to, to, at least for us, it's been important that running a venue is more than doing shows yeah. so people get attached to a place rather than the shows okay that's my experience that if you want to build a strong strong audience like a regular audience you have to you have to make people fall in love with the place you're running and not just come for the shows of course the shows has to be good and there has to be a certain variety to it uh, and I think this, the formats you do also has to have some kind of uh, firmness. They have to be strong in another way than what you can deliver on a festival, for instance. Because in a festival you can do shows that are more spectacular in a way. They could be like more um, uh, a more sort of very specific take on what you do. But that doesn't necessarily mean that people will come back week after week yeah. seeing it. So there's. There's a slightly sort of different way of thinking about the shows you want to develop for a regular audience. It's subtle, but it's a slight difference. But I think for us, it was really important to very early on decide what kind of place did we want this to be. I think what makes us a bit different, our starting point, is that uh, most of the people in our ensemble are working actors mm. and educated, like, trained actors. Uh, I'm not saying that because it's necessarily a very good thing. I'm just saying it's somewhat, from what I experienced, a bit different yeah. than a lot of other improv communities. So what we got is we got a lot of people who are, have a broad interest in theatre and in theatricality per se. So that um, this sort of, uh, and, and people who have been working at theatres and sort of had a, uh, can in somewhat, in a bigger way sort of be dedicating their actual time because people don't have to have day jobs for instance which makes things different yeah. that also made it easier for us to say that uh, we want uh, everyone to sort of take part in being this place yeah okay so we made this made a couple of sort of um, hidden lot of aims for ourselves we made one really hairy one that um, that is still sort of like a like a stupid uh, very idealistic uh, goal for us and that is that our theater should be a place where people feel that their dreams will come true. Okay. Yeah. That might be for performers or for the audience. That when they come there, they should feel that this is a place where my dreams could either be played out on stage in that respect, but also in the fact that they come and they think I could be a part of this theater. So we have a very strong volunteer program at the theater, so it's easy for the audience to, to be a part of the story about the theater. So we also said to ourselves that we want people to act like we're running a never-ending home alone party. That this is the sort of attitude. Yeah. So I think that these kind of that kind of work is as important when you're building a regular audience, because I think they want to fall in love. I think the audience want to fall in love with you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but they don't want to feel the distance all the time, because there's a distance when we're on stage, even. No matter how we sort of play, there's always a distance because they will always there will be a status difference yeah. between the audience and us because we're the one who do the crazy fucking shit. So they think, oh my god, they're so crazy to do the those fucking shit things for us. So there's always that kind of distance to the audience. So it's important when you run a venue to find ways of eliminating that difference in other ways. So we don't we for instance decided not to have a separate entrance for the performers. The performers, when they arrive at the theater, have to go through the cafe, have to go where everyone else goes. These kind of tiny mm. bits, um, which I think made us give us another kind of position than a lot of other improv sort of venues tend to get.
Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, this is just speculations because I really have no idea how we got such a big audience. So, <laughs> so you have to open another theater and see. If we'll see if, if, yeah, if it's a really good theory or not. Change. The <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's a, there's a need some uh, approvals, but it's an interesting thing I, because I think one thing is people go to a uh, theater because they want to see this play mm -hmm. or they want to see this actor playing or they want to see this director's next yes. work or they want to see their um, orchestra playing their yeah. uh, kind of and we have a, a lack of it because we don't say the, the play we don't know what it is mm. people like to go to formats i think they say oh yeah let's see theater sports or let's see a maestro or something Absolutely. like that I think with that you can fall in love, but you cannot really fall in love with the content of a of an improvised play. So no. it's interesting to think about. Okay, then let's let them fall in love with the group or the company or yes. the venue. That's that's an interesting point. I think that when when people come to theater, I think it's they're partly interested in what they're seeing, but they're also partly like on an emotional level. They're partly interested in the social event that is going on. So that they're sitting together with other people, that kind of being that monster in the audience, that I think that feeling for the audience is just as important. Uh, and I think that culture in general, cultural venues in general has this problem that people will come to too rarely because it feels like such a special event. Mm. You know what I mean? That Sometimes theaters can feel like it's something very special. You have to dress up and it's like so expensive. You can do it once a year maybe and you have to combine it with a dinner and some family because it's it turns out to be like a really cultural event out of it. And I think it's people is never going to be changed because I do really think that people will be changed if they go to theater. But they will never be changed unless it's part of their everyday life. It has to be something they do every day. Or not every day, and it will be but, really strange, but yeah. uh, on a regular basis, yeah. that's what changes your habits. And I think just being in the theater, whatever you see, if it's just crap or if it's really good, I don't really, th I think that's not the biggest difference. The biggest difference is if you actually go there and be there with other people, laughing or saying that was shit or saying that was great. I mean, it's just that sort of sitting around the campfire from where we were living in tiny villages around in the world. That's that, the same sort of community arising. And, and um, and it's too bad that a lot of improv groups has to be sort of uh, nomads and visiting groups in other places all the time because it's harder to sort of create that that uh, very sort of tender relationship with your audience. Yeah, that's that's an interesting point. Yeah, I think that's a, that's an idea Brecht I think came up with who yeah. said uh, theater is a morality institution. Yeah. And and it's for the audience to discuss or see replay part of the life to rethink it to have a to have a kind of an outstanding position about their own um, issues to see it and, yeah. and to think about oh yeah that's my problem okay I, I saw it from an outside perspective so theater can really um, teach something yeah. if you <clears throat> use it in this way and I think that's an interesting point to say okay. Uh, you have to invite the audience more often to give them the possibility to... To change, you know. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Um, but let's go back to the festival because yep. I am interested in... Because now you are in the festival mm -hmm. after three years of running this theater. Yes. Uh, uh, the first time. Yes. And um, you bring here a format... Um, Ibsen format or Ibsen yeah. genre format? I don't know how to call it. You no, it's like a it's a it's a um, it's a full length one act play, played in the style of Henrik Ibsen in a way. And that's that's something from your local theater um, tradition, I would say. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, uh, people in Oslo go to see uh, performed Ibsen or is it something for uh, we do it because uh, school classes have to see it or what, what's what's the audience for? No, the audience? That's a good question. This is not a show that we made to draw a big audience because yep. we make shows that do both at our theater because we have the privilege of having our own place. We should also do stuff that doesn't necessarily need a big audience. So this is one of those projects. It's um, and a little you bit said scripted theater is a part of absolutely, and so yeah, yeah, and and I think, I think, do Norwegian people have? I think uh, all Norwegians 
know of Henry Gibson in a way. And they, they are, even if they're not familiar with, uh, with a certain text, in some weird way they seem to be familiar with the style of the old-fashioned Gibson. I don't know how, but it seems to sort of resonate very clearly for most people. So what we wanted to do, we just, uh, it was then the Torgny and Camilla and me who decided to, we wanted to try to do something with Ibsen and spent uh, almost half a year just discussing and analyzing and trying to figure out what he does and see if there's, uh, maybe he has a bag of tricks that we could use in a way. Uh, but still being able to discuss something that we were engaged to discuss when we were actually discussing it. And so what is great with Ibsen, of course, is that he's discussing themes that uh, people think is relevant even today in his plays. Uh, and I think <clears throat> those kind of themes, Norwegians are very, they, they, they know what Ibsen used to talk about. So in that way, it feels like there's, when the audience comes to see this show in Oslo, they seem to be very familiar with it. So there's an added layer that doesn't reflect so very well when we do it in English, but there's like an extra layer because of the Norwegian language and the way we're familiar with Ibsen using his language that doesn't come over as good in English. We try to do it, but it's different. Uh, and I think, um, I think it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a bit interesting actually to try to improvise him in the context of Oslo, where there's a lot of other Ibsen things going on. We actually played at the International Ibsen Festival at the National Theater last year. Yeah. And, uh, and I talked to people who said that it's sort of in some weird way, it sort of recontextualizes Ibsen. Um, sort of, in a way, it makes him, it's a way of um, um, making him contemporary, even if we wear really old costumes and talk in an old fashioned manner. Uh, so, I don't know, we do it because we think it's a lot of fun, but uh, it's nice that it's, uh, if it can do something <laughs> for the other ones. We, I mean, I sometimes say that we are like the, uh, we are the Mariana of theatres okay. in Oslo. Yeah. We're like the first step in. Then you can go to heavier drugs afterwards if you want to. We're like the first step. Right. So if we can work as a, sort of like a, um, a place seducing people, seducing people to get into theater, because yeah. we love so much in theater. We uh, we want people to to experience the width of everything that's going on. And um, I don't know. and how it was here in, in Amsterdam? Because okay, you said you you improvised in English. What's really a challenge, I think, because you are a little bit like disabled in your way of express things yeah and then on the other hand there's an, another kind of audience mm. because there's a first step in a festival audience was a whole, lot of improvisers looking like oh wow, wow not what they're doing or how they are yeah, doing yeah 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 uh, i think it's really something and the other thing is um there are dutch audience yeah. um looking or watching an ibsen play in improvised uh did you have the feeling to that the that the audience didn't get you or your 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 or or was it in another way interesting because like um, I don't know yeah it's a good question I'm I think I might I think I'm not uh, sensitive enough to to feel if the audience understands me or not because I'm having too much fun doing it but uh, <laughs> but I think yeah what is um, Ibsen is sort of one of those kind of shows that. Um, that uh, works well in a festival, actually, this Ibsen performance, because it's uh, very, not very, but it's kind of different than a lot of other improv shows, because it's not funny, or at least it's hardly funny, I'd say, because Ibsen wrote tragedies, and that's what we're trying to do. So it's usually rather sad. It's uh, characters who have um, hidden agendas and they are dual, they carry a duality of good and bad in, within themselves and I think from the feedback that we got from the audience, this seems to resonate even if they don't know what Ibsen is, in a way. So we can say that for us, when we get into a festival like this, Ibsen is for us like a, a door opener to improvise other stuff. We're sort of we improvise in the disguise of Ibsen 
but um, but uh, the audience can do the experience that they can actually enjoy something being improvised that is not very funny and it's kind of slow you know it's, yeah. it's kind of it's like a regular scene text so it's it can be quite slow but um, if they like it or not I don't know I mean yeah, they don't. They don't leave. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <they're>, okay. <laughs> at least. <laughs> at least they don't leave. Uh, and they clap at the end. I think. Mm. Or a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And the improvisers, as you say, they come and say, "How do you do it? How do you?" I think. I think the big difference with the most comments we get is that it's uh, which fi which I find interesting is that they a lot of people say uh, it's so nice to see uh, improvisers uh, act for real. Yeah. Okay. Because. And it's an interesting, it's an interesting comment. I think for us, we spend quite an amount of time also working on acting at our theater, and we are building a relationship with the with the, um, st the stately sort of acting training school in Norway, trying to swap ideas and learn from them. And, so for us, it's a really sort of natural part of improvisation to actually act. But it, it's an interesting comment, though, yeah. that, that it's, it's fun to see improvisers actually act. Because what that means is that you usually see improvisers who don't act. Or be a lot of private on stage, a lot yeah, of private yeah. movements that not belong to an... Or even that sort of character. ironic distance yeah. to their characters. And, and somewhat, I mean, I don't... We have shows at our theater that is just plain stupid, it's just lot of fun and just people fucking about uh, and I don't mind that no. but I think that uh, like with and, and that's like that in, in, in ordinary theater as well you see something that's very serious something that's very light something that just has an ironic distance something that doesn't and I think it should be the same with improvising it should be you should have a big variety of people doing all kinds of weird stuff so uh, so maybe yeah maybe maybe that sort of reads well, when you get into a festival like this, you see a lot of improvised shows and suddenly you see someone who's very serious and walks around in old costumes and saying really serious stuff and trying to be sort of brainy about it. Uh, that sort of is a, maybe a bit of a shock for a lot of people. I don't know. Yeah, and I, see, I think to you, like a uh, festival like this, you compare, you have a lot of improvisers so close together, you can compare their styles and maybe also their... Yes their nationality differences like yesterday we saw a show um, translate uh, yeah. where they all play in their own language yeah. and so you see a little bit the kind of how they do it in their home country yeah, how they true. play and that's I think it's interesting in a festival like this to have this exchange of ideas and yeah. also of cultural uh, differences absolutely that, that we can learn from, maybe, or we yeah. say, no, I don't want to do this. It's it's too Ibsen for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I feel, just from my sort of 15, 20 years of being an improviser, that I see that there's just in these, especially in the last 10 years or so, the community is getting much more eclectic and are shopping much more around for different tools and styles and, and sort of angles on the work. Uh, earlier on when I started there was so much more than you would meet people from Chicago saying Kit Johnston is a fool and people from Canada saying how they'll close is impossible to understand and all of these kind of weird sort of uh, very uh, seclusive sort of uh, attitudes but uh, I feel that that's really changing maybe it's because there's coming younger people who doesn't really have that sort of history with them in mm -hmm. a way but uh, coming to festivals like this is great Exactly because of that, because you can, you can, you you you, you meet at least at least first of all, I've just met people who are really open, and interested, and in, engaged, and think, oh, we don't do that. How can we learn to do that? And you and the other way around. So there's, I think that there's, um, I think that makes it look. To me, sometimes I had the feeling in my times that there's. Ah, this is, this improv thing is going to die within 15 years. There's no more improvised theaters because it's just shit. But I mean that that sort of very eclectic and very open attitude that is coming, I feel, just have renewed my faith in the whole work of it and thinking that because there's so much stuff left to do. Yeah, and and so much other uh, art forms to incorporate into our yes. art forms. Uh, yes. Because what what you are working on 
uh, now? What's what's the thing in the next fifteen years? You you want to do it? No, the, the near future. Mm. And also, what kind of work inspires you at the moment in improv or not in improv? It's a good question. It's a, but it's also a difficult one. I'm very interested in how to how to teach improvisers to make a good text on stage. There's been so many years where improvisers talk about we have to be more physical, we have to be more physical, we have to don't talk so much and talk much. And for me, it's I only want imp if people are saying something valuable, I don't care if they're standing still. Yeah. So physicality is a way of stopping people from saying shit for me. But also how to train improvisers actually to be able to make a text that is theater text, that inspires me quite a lot. And we've been trying to find some good exercises and games to teach ourselves how to do that. So that's one of those things that we've been working on. I think for us to, to diminish the gap between improvised theater and scripted theater is very important. And we've been very much inspired by uh, the sort of the modern new clown uh, storytelling things that's going on in the fringe theater scene. People like uh, Trigby Wakenshaw, um, Dr. Brown, Stuart Bowden, people that sort of bring a very sort of lo-fi and very direct communication with a lot of improvisation within their script. Uh, that there's, um, uh, I really want uh, I, I'd, I'd really want like uh, improvisers not to be so lazy. So, because mm. it's easy when you are an improviser, you you get the experience that why on earth sh why should I work on a play when people pay money and come to see me when I haven't done anything before I go on stage? So it's hard to, but trying to find ways of inspiring our improvisers to still go. But I want to make a solo show. I want, we should make a show together, and we should work on it. We should because it, these things are feeding each other. Yeah. I'm talking to Patty Styles, which a lot of people know because she's been teaching a lot. Uh, she told me that in the early days at the Loose Moose in Calgary, when they, when Keith was artistic director, they, they, she said that that uh, they used to do his weird plays because his Keith's plays are really weird, dark, and really cool. Mm. And she said that they would he, Keith would put up plays with them with blood and you know really destructive, really weird shit. And then the day after, they would do an improvise. They would do my show, a guerrilla show. And she said, of course, our improvised shows are fed by all of these weird things, the darkness of the other scripted shows, and vice versa. So I think it's really important for uh, improvisers and for non-improvisers to see that sort of the effect that these things have on each other. So I, we work really hard to inspire our improvisers to also do the job and, and make a solid make a solid scripted performance. I think it's uh, it'll teach them about text, about movement, about dramaturgy, and about theatricality in a very different way. A lot of improv is very sort of uh, inspired by uh, film dramaturgy, and less by the dramaturgy that theater has developed during the last 40, 50 years. Mm. Theater has a lot of different possibilities that the movies don't. Mm. Those movies are basically cuts. The movie is made by cuts. You jump from one situation to the yeah. other. But theater has a much greater variety of swinging the story around. So bringing those kind of elements back into improvisation, I think, is, inspires me a lot. Very much. Cool. Thanks a lot for this talk. I enjoyed it a lot. Thank you. I've been inspired. Oh, God. Um, Thank you very much. Yeah, and I hope to see you again in some festivals. Uh, I hope so. Here, then in Oslo. In yes. The venue. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Bye. Thanks for watching us.